My name is Trey Browning. I'm just a family man who loves to do artwork on the side, takes care of his family, does construction around the house, and just works for a living. So with, uh, with comic books, how did you get involved with doing art for comics? I'm a friend of mine that worked at Home Depot with me, um, worked for Rising Sun. He got me an interview with Hawk, and that's really how I started. So, did you used to do comic book art before, or this is just something that you just started getting on once your friend introduced you? Just, a, just pictures I did for myself. Nothing for online. Nothing like that. Just at home in the house. What did you start off doing? Like the pictures you started off with. What, what were they? I did a lot of superhero stuff, mainly Dragon Ball Z. Just. Just stuff, what was, whatever, whatever was on TV at the time. Yeah. How long were you doing that before you um, got involved with um, Rising Sun? Probably since I was little, maybe since I was seven or eight. Yeah. My dad was an artist, so I just kind of picked it up from him. What sort of art did your dad used to do? Paint, sculpture, welding. A little bit of everything. Nothing right. for a living, but just for fun. Yeah. So what are some of the books that you've been working on currently? Uh, nothing currently right now. I um, I just finished up some stuff with uh, Delbit Press with Rise and Sun, um, Adventures of the Unknown, uh, Volume 3, 3 mm -hmm. or 4. But since that ended, I haven't done anything. So what was it, um, what were the characters like um, working on with um, with doubt it? Um, well, the it really just changed because normally it was just one chapter, one shot done. Um, the last one involved a couple of pirates and a couple of gods out on the island. Um, a female god, fiery clothing, um, male god with like a f muscular fruit necklace. Um, and then some kind of funky looking pirates, a short little fat one, a tall general looking one, stuff like that. Um, I've done, uh, the previous one, Belle, the girl was mainly in, um, like a hospital gown the whole time, trying to break out of being captured. Mm. Just simple stuff like that. Oh. Hello? Were these colored or just black and white images, um, artwork you're talking about? Um, just black and white. Um, I've done a couple covers for stuff, but it's typically black and white. Um, depending on how well the stuff goes in Adventures of the Unknown, the different chapters, if they do well, they get more stories, maybe a standalone. Yeah. Just trying to get this, um, this is an unknown. Yep, there we go. Let's come up and just check, um, popping up. So this is through the Rise of Zone Comics publishing group. Right. On um, Rise of Zone Comics page. So this one with, um, with a, with a yellow background with, um, with a, Female with blue hair, black hair on there. Is that worked on? Different. Which one? Are, um, uh, what was the background again? I think Adventures of the Unknown Two is the one up here. Uh, I don't believe I did the cover for number two. I think it was for three. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, no. I um. I did not do that cover. I, however, did do the comic based off that cover on the inside. Someone else did the cover. Okay. So, were these like um, a single shot, like 22 page issue uh, comics, or were they like a um, couple of pages and then uh, short stories? Uh, they're 
I think it was four or five short stories about five to eight pages each. Mm -hmm. And in that issue, I think I only did two of them. No, actually, I only did so one there's, of them. Um, so in this one, there's Hellclaw, Kid Flame, Communion, and... I did, I did Kid Fame. That was the one I did in that one. Right, Kid Fame. Sorry, I thought, thought I saw Alan there. So these are available through Kindle and Amazon on... Um, through the Rising Sun um, Publishing Group, as, as um, where are we? As well as the um, Drive Through Comics, so they're about three nine nine to pick it up, or you can also get um, as a print comic, but you can also get it through Kindle and Amazon as a um, digital read. So if you you guys are at home, you know, needing something to read. You can grab grab one through Amazon and also pick one up through Drive Through Comics. So you can't say that I've got my comics out right now to read. Um, so that won't let me post that. So how did you find working on these short stories? I mean, were these your first ones that you worked on, or were these um, you know others that you worked on? No, um, these are my first. I've never really did anything for companies before this, so it was kind of interesting going from just my own little ideas and stuff to working with scripts. I've never worked with a script before or anything before this, and it's an interesting experience from the get-go. Especially like like you're saying that you just did like um, single um, pop culture type figures like Dragon Ball Z and stuff like that, but now you're doing sequential art where you're actually, you know, having to work with another person off a script. So how did you find, like, going from single images to actual sequential art, like where you're doing a whole bunch of different characters along with, you know, whatever the artist is asking you to work, um, sorry, the writer is asking you to work on? It didn't feel too much different because um, I always drew a lot of different characters from a lot of different things. Um, little fan fiction -y type of pictures with multiple characters from different series. It really, it just felt more organized mm. with this company. Um, having to go off a script instead of just whatever came out of your head and all that. Did you... Um have you ever, did you ever actually think about doing that yourself off your own work? I've thought about it. Um, I've been getting ideas lately and thinking of stuff from the past and just a little busy trying to figure out how to do it without yeah. a proper script. I'm not, I'm not too good at writing the script. I'm better at going off of one. Mm. So how are you like with, you know, when you – you know, when you're just doing like pop art, where it's just this, this is a character and that, and you just go, well, this is what the motion is. How do you find it going, doing that with like a sequential art where you have to work with, um, you know, whatever the art, um, the writer saying, hey, I want it to look like this. How do you find working with the emotion, motion direction of the um, art to get it to artwork stage from the paper? I mean, from the words to the. So far, it's been pretty simple. Um... Most of the descriptions have been pretty accurate. Not much, not too much difficulty with it. Um, trying to figure out the layout of the backgrounds has been more of a hard point, I guess. Trying to figure out what's in the background, where's it positioned towards the characters, when the characters move, how's the background move in comparison to the character, where the background doesn't change, change, you know, you have a mountain in one scene, but it's not there the next. Mm. That type of situation. Where do you um, where do you think you'd like to go from here? Like, I mean, you've you've done all these short stories, and um, I know we've talked about working on some stuff. But where do you see yourself going? I uh, wanted to do, especially with comics and stuff. I'm not too sure. I'm wanting to go further in the field, make it more of a career instead of just a hobby. Mm. That's probably the big thing is just trying to make a career out of it. 
working on bigger stories, 22 page comics. Yeah. Multiple comics, volume ones and twos, stuff like that. How does your um like you know you already your your family man you, do you have kids? I have two kids, a two year oh well he'll be two next week and then a a six month old. So you got to are you guys in lockdown there? Ah, uh, supposed to be locked down, but people aren't following the rules. Hmm. Um. So. How does your family, um, like, how does your partner find it? Like, you know, you um, working full time and then coming home. Are you like, uh, you know, having to find spare uh, time to actually do your work, or do you find a struggle to actually do art? You know, after having come from home, you know, working your hard days labor and then coming home, you know, tired and. Well, it really just depends on how she's feeling because she stays at home with the boys all day. Um... But typically, I have two days out of the week mm. where I draw after work, like Tuesday, Thursday, or Monday, Wednesday. Yeah. Kind of figure it out. You know, sometimes that might change depending on how exhausted she is because my oldest can get jealous and just cause trouble all day and wear her out. <laughs> yeah. Um, so do you find yourself, uh, you know, drawing during your breaks at work, during lunch and, you know, tea breaks? Um, I haven't been doing it for a long time. I started in the past few weeks. Yeah. Doodling, doing character sketches, stuff like that, getting back in the swing of things. How do you find going from like doing pop art to actual um, working on like structured things? Uh, characters, I should say. Ah, uh, it all feels pretty similar to me. Um, it's kind of drawing is drawing, whether I'm just drawing a cover page to draw on a comic book page. Mm. Uh, the main thing is try and make sure you have spots to fit the word bubbles. Mm. One of the things like I find with, uh, with um, letterers, which annoys me a lot because I'm a letterer myself, is I tend to cover over people's artwork. You know, someone who's like a big... An artist myself who is has to work on my own stuff and do everything myself sometimes. Watching someone's art get covered, especially when I know in my head that when I'm looking at this artwork that guys have spent hours doing something and the letterer comes along and just shoves it all over the you know, in the most unusual place because they're not used to being a letterer or don't understand the artist, you know, how much work the artist done. Do you find that um that when you look at other people's comic books, do you find that as well? Like uh, where the speech bubbles are just taking up too much room or? Well, it kind of really depends. Cause when I work on, um, when I get the script, you know, it, it has the description plus it has all the words that are needed into it. Hmm. So I try to figure out where the speech bubbles will go. You know, if there's going to be a huge lot of text in one bubble, I try to make sure that's just some background there or maybe character's shoulder or something like that. Nothing too crazy, I guess you could say. I've been yeah. actually doing the speech bubbles in the past few of them. I've done mul done a lot of that, so I've learned more on how I should, should do it. Yeah. So I actually have not had somebody else do the speech bubbles on my artwork yet to figure out if I dislike how they do it or not. Yeah. So, um, with, with Adventures in the Unknown, it's all black and white, isn't it? Um, well, it's supposed to be a horror, a lot of horror comics, I guess. Hmm. It didn't really feel like it, but I could see where they were figuring it but so I'm looking at some of the artwork here so with the previews do you um, have you colored any of your own you know, in your own work Did, uh, do you do it digitally or uh, freehand sorry I should ask that first um I've been doing a lot more um digital i've been doing everything on a tablet 
Yeah. Um, I prefer to do it by hand, but it's been much more convenient to do it on the tablet because I don't have to buy the paper, you know, go scan it, edit it once I do that. But um, I, I used to do a lot of inks, different colored inks, you know, Copic markers, stuff like that. So uh, do you digitally color as well, or do you just uh, leave it to somebody else to do that? Um, I do a lot of digital colors. Um, uh, Adventures of the Unknown 3, I did the cover in, uh, with, um, in digital and all that. Just trying to have a look at the, um, see if that's up yet. Let me just check. Because I've got... I think the only one I've got here available in front of me is, um, which is about nine. Yeah, that's all that's available here. Um, did you, so this, you only worked on two and three. Correct. Okay. So that's the cover of number three right there without the words. Bring it up closer a bit, sorry. Very cool. So, who are the characters in that one there? Um, Belle is the main character. She's the one up in the front. And the three in the back are um, two scientists and a soldier, or a general mm -hmm. that um, were working together Yeah. Um, for experimentations upon um, Belle. Do you have any of the inside work I can look at, or is this the cover you've got there? Sorry. Um, I ha I have it all. Cool. So did did you color that or did somebody else color that? I colored this. Excellent. I'm just look, trying to get a um, better look at it. Just can't see too much uh, detail there. That's it. Wicked. So how many pages of that story is it in, is in there? Uh, of your work, eight, sorry. This is eight, eight pages. pages. Are those eight pages a complete story? Yes. What is the theme? Uh, what is the plot of the story or theme of the story? Uh, the plot has her wake up in a, in a lab. Uh, the doctors are talking about what they're going to do with her. And the processes of her escaping, last page, she's going out the door, bright white light, and it would cut to cut to black, you could say, if it was a TV show. Yeah. I think the, um, they're planning on more to do mm -hmm. with it after her escape. As of right now, I don't know. Okay. All right, so um, do you have your own website or anything where people can check you out on or like Twitter or anything like that? I do not. I've been talking about doing a yeah a website, stuff like that, but I haven't got to yet. Okay. All right, so in finishing, is there anything like you'd like to add or say? No. Um, I can't really think of much. Uh, I just enjoy art and bringing smiles to people. Excellent. All right, but thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. I know um, busy at work and stuff, and you've got your weekend. Um, yeah, enjoy it, and hopefully everything's going well there where, where you are in the U.S., and we'll catch up with you soon, and hopefully we'll see some more artwork in the future as we carry on with um, doing the streams and have you back on. All right, thank you very much. I appreciate this. Cool. Hey, thanks guys for watching this uh, interview with Trey Browning, who's been working on Adventures in the Unknown. He's worked on issue two and three. Uh, I've got the link there. You guys can um, um, check it out. And hopefully, yeah, if you've got, if you need something to read right now, get it through um, uh, Amazon Kindle and also drive through comics. Thank you. Kokitano, guys. Check you out later.